CataractCoach.com, how to reposition a torque eye well. A proper alignment is key for a great refractive outcome. And you can see this patient has a toric lens away from the desired axis. So you can see the purple ink marks are where we want the axis to be. That's the steep axis. We need to line the lens up in that meridian. So you can kind of open up the existing paracentes. He's not sure when this patient had prior cataract surgery, but you can see this toric lens that's in the bag, looks like an EDOF lens, is not at the appropriate axis. So as a result, the patient doesn't have a good refractive outcome. Now remember, for every 30 degrees or one clock hour that the lens is off, you basically lose all benefit of the toricity. So in a case like this, it looks like it's off by about 30 degrees. So you definitely want to get it rotated back appropriately. Now remember the shape of the haptics and the orientation. You need to have this lens kind of first freed up from the capture bag. So you can see the surgeon open up the main incision just with a Sinsky hook. So remember, if you make these totally avascular incisions, yes, even months later, even a year later, you can open them up with just a Sinsky. Now, using a sharp 27-gauge needle on the viscoelastic, maybe get the air bubbles out, you want to get under that rexus edge and have a viscoelastic wave. So if you have a little bit of a gap there, now you can switch back to a blunt 27-gauge cannula, go underneath that same little gap, and you want to be injecting a dispersive viscoelastic to separate the IOL from the capsule bag. Now you need to separate both the haptics and the optic. You really want to free this lens up from the capsule bag. Now some surgeons, if it's really in the close post dive period, will reposition this lens with, without using viscoelastic. We've had videos of that in the past too. Hey, remember, check out retinorons.com. I keep telling you about it because you are shortchanging yourself by not learning from retina rounds. Now, again, here, more viscoelastic to really get the capsule bag open. It looks like this patient had surgery quite a while ago. I'd say at least many months. And now, once that's opened up here, you should be able to free up the haptics. Now, why did the lens misrotate in the first place? Well, the most common reason is actually that the surgeon left viscoelastic behind the optic. And that viscoelastic that was between the posterior side of the optic and the posterior capsule that acted as a lubricant and allowed the lens to shift or rotate around. Another reason is you could have, if you have a patient who has a flattening of the AC in the post op period, for whatever reason, let's say your incision didn't seal well, they may flatten the AC, the lens then shifts, then the AC reinflates as they make more aqueous, and the AC the next morning may be okay, and now the lens has shifted. And so here we're going to very carefully bring that lens and get it rotated up. You could get the lens completely out of the capsule bag, but I don't know if that's really necessary, but you definitely got to free it up. And you can see if the haptics are stuck here, and this Alcon type lens has these bulbous tips on the haptic, you need to spend enough time to visco dissect and just take your time. You really have to free, separate the anterior leaflet of the capsule from the posterior leaflet. That's super important. Once that's done, now look, now you can free that haptic up. Now here the surgeon can bring the whole lens up. Okay, you can get it out of the AC, that's no problem. The lens itself, the spherical power is good, so the lens itself is gonna be kept. You're not gonna explant the lens. It's not an IOL exchange, it's just repositioning. So again, get the other haptic freed up as well. And now look at the orientation of the haptics. This is why, remember, it's easier to rotate these lenses clockwise than it is counterclockwise. Because if it's clockwise, then it's kind of going with the flow of the haptics. Counterclockwise, those haptic ends push into the capsule back here. There it is. Now it's totally freed up. Now what should you do? Well, get it in the right position and then get those haptics where you want them. And so here the surgeon's going to just put it in the bag, the whole thing now, and then rotate the lens around. And now, let's see, get that into good position. Sometimes it's also helpful to put a caps or tension ring in the bag. Sometimes that can give the bag a little bit more stability when holding the torque lens in position. But again, let's get that thing rotated where you want it. Now, using the IA probe, make sure you get out all the viscoelastic. So I like this idea. Definitely always go behind the optic, remove that viscoelastic. Now, because we use a dispersive agent here, remember, it's going to take a little more effort to get all that viscoelastic out. Remember, you dissect the bag with a dispersive. Normally, in a, in a virgin cataract surgery, you're using a cohesive viscoelastic to fill the capsule bag. It's a lot easier to remove it. So take your time here. Really remove it. Now, was that a glaucoma stent there nasally? I think your glaucoma stent's popping out, my friend. Look at that. I just didn't notice that until now. So maybe that's going to need some repositioning as well. But now we've got the toric lens of the appropriate alignment. Now, that's a whole other question. Should, we put it, should you be putting in an EDOF lens in a patient who has enough glaucoma that they require a stent? Right? That's a whole nother question. So here, look at the lens is in pretty good position. At this point, let's hydrate the main incision, and we can call it a quits. I'd just be tempted to kind of take a look at that stent there one more time, maybe put some viscoelastic, put up a gonio, and take a look, see what you got there. Maybe you need to adjust it a little bit. But again, now the torque lens is in good position. You should have a nice outcome here, refractive-wise. You should be able to address all that astigmatism. And again, sometimes helpful to put a CTR on these eyes to make sure the capsule bag is a little bit more stable. 
And um, now sealing up the incisions. The other eyes that we tend to see this in is a very, very large myopic eyes. But remember, these silic these uh, acrylic lenses do have a, a surface that's kind of st uh, sticky or tacky. And that can help really kind of tack it or hold it into place as the eye heals. Now, this eye already had contraction of the capsular bag, so you may not have the great holding power that you would in an uh, original cataract surgery. Because in original cataract surgery, the capsular bag shrink wraps down a whole lot more. In this case, it may not do much more shrink wrapping. So it may not be as firm of a hold on those haptics as if it was done at the first surgery. So good technique here. Looks like a pretty good outcome there. But again, I look at that. I check on that glaucoma stent there nasally. Maybe something's up there. Well, time will tell. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out Retina Rounds, our sister channel. So much great material for cataract surgeons like you too. I promise you're going to love it.